Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jason Camellio, and I'm from the Office of Global Initiatives here at Berkeley. And I'm joined today by my colleagues, uh, Assistant Director, Ray Soul. Bring Ray on here, here we go. And our Assistant in the Office and Berkeley and Puerto Rico veteran alumna, Cristela Sotomayor. Thank you, Cristela. And um, we have today with us a couple of special guests that are gonna talk to you in uh, detail about the program. We have, uh, I think, Professor, yes? Of jazz, nope, Me? assistant Me? professor, associate professor <laughs> of jazz composition, uh, harmony and jazz composition at Berkeley, Ian Inserto. And she's our academic director for the program this year. She's a program veteran, been at the program for a number of years. And we also have another Berkeley alum, uh, associate professor of songwriting, um, award-winning writer, performer, Rodney Alejandro. Thank you all for joining us today. So this is a great opportunity for us to share details about the Berkeley and Puerto Rico program. We're so excited to be back this year. And um, we actually have another um, special guest that's joining us today, which I'm really excited about. Actually, let me just make sure that we can add him in. Yep, there we go, Berkeley alum. The director of the Conservatory de Arts del Caribe, or del Arts, de, yeah, del, del Caribe in San Juan, Rumid Amador. He attended the very first Berkeley and Puerto Rico program way back when, 20 years ago. And um, and he is, you know, Ruben, you are a mainstay. You are our prime connection there in the island for all things music education and connecting with all the teachers and the students. And we appreciate everything that you do um, and keeping. Um, all these students motivated and going forward. So thanks for being here, man. Always. Cool. So um, what I'd like to do is I just want to have um, our, our, our faculty members at Berkeley who are going to be teaching the program talk a little bit about um, their experience at Berkeley and what they do and then what they're looking to bring to the program this year. Then we're going to turn it over to Cristalis. And Cristalis, you're going to dig in and kind of talk to folks about the application process and the different tracks that are available in the program so that our, our, our guests here can get a good sense of, you know, the different offerings that we're going to be delivering in San Juan. Yeah. And, then, um, and then we're going to turn it over to all of you. And um, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, but also, we're more than happy to have you come on, turn on your camera and turn on your mic and, um, and, and just ask your questions to any of us on the team. You can talk, ask questions about the program, and then as we get along into the discussion, if you have questions about Berkeley, we're more than happy to answer questions for you about Berkeley as well. So, Ayn, you've been at the program, you've done auditions and interviews there, you've been teaching at the program. Um, you know, for, for these folks that are going to come in and participate, um, why don't you tell them a little bit about what you do at Berkeley? in your work, because you, you do so many things at Berkeley and outside of Berkeley, but then what is it that they can expect to um, have happen this year when they join us in May? So hi, everyone. It's nice to see you all and um, happy Saturday, I guess. Um, so my name is Professor Einan Serto. I am faculty um, in harmony and jazz composition. My main thing is that I am a composer and a jazz composer, although I do dabble in all sorts of different types of um, genres, if you will. And um, I've been teaching at Berkeley since 2005, and I've been sort of um, going to Puerto Rico, I think since 2012, whether it was as um, someone doing auditions or someone actually teaching in the program. It is such a great, amazing program, um, and it's such a great place to go. Um, I've never been at a program where I feel like every student wants every other student to be better and everyone just helps out each other. It is just absolutely a positive experience. The people of Puerto Rico are just the most amazing people in the world who are so generous and so great. And so it's a chance for us um, as faculty to hopefully bring some of our experiences to you um, in this one jam-packed week. It is absolutely jam-packed with so much music making and creativity and um and we try to give you as much experience you know a great experience as possible um this year we will have something different with rodney um and um giving us a different track there in terms of with the songwriting and the production and he will definitely be talking more about that but otherwise you know we're thinking 
along the lines of having a performance at the end. Um, your day will start off around 10 o'clock um, where we would do things that have to do with um, your own instrument and then also some sort of theory kind of ideas and and um, and possibly also some like musicianship ideas. So there's the, the concentration in the morning and then in the afternoon we will be doing ensembles, usually sometimes just some special projects that are going on. Um, so that's kind of like the typical days that um, that you will have. And as I mentioned, there's a big concert, um, you know, that will happen um, at the end of the program. And it's so wonderful to see everybody just participating. Um, the energy level is up. It's been two years since we've been down there. And so we can't wait to get back to this and to just, um, you know, just to be a part of this. It's almost feels like there's been a hole missing since I've not gone to Puerto Rico. Um, and I'm sure for you also that it was, you know, this, this has been a trying time. So, um, but I love the program. And one of the, the biggest things I think I love about it is as I'm teaching at Berkeley, the number of students that I see go through um, the Puerto Rico program who are attending Berkeley now as students. And I love to say to them, I knew you when you were this short and like, you know, and like you, you were playing like these scales. Now you're like, you're jamming and you're, you know, you're, you're just going nuts and everything like that. So it's an amazing thing to watch people grow from this amazing program and then get to attend Berkeley. Sometimes they even come over for the five week. And then after that, they got into Berkeley and just seeing them working the Boston scene is, is absolutely wonderful. Cristalis is a great example of that. She went through the Puerto Rico program. She went through Berkeley and here she is you know, working, so. She um, just got accepted to the Boston Conservatory for her master's degree. Congratulations, that's amazing. That's Thank amazing. You. So um, I know that there's no doubt in my mind, apply, um, you will have an absolutely great time. You will learn so much from the amazing faculty that we have, um, but you'll also learn a lot from each other. So Jason, do I need to add anything else? No, you know, the one thing that tends to come up is like, if I'm a younger student, you know, maybe I've just played in concert band at school or I just sing in the choir. I don't have a lot of experience playing in bands or, you know, learning about improvisation or things like that. You know, what is this like a good idea for me to to come to this program now? What would you know what you know, what do you think about that for for a younger experienced musician? Absolutely. You know, it's just there's there's no time, you know, like now, to be honest, because one of my favorite things that I got to experience um, when I was um, teaching the program was one of my ensembles. It was just like the craziest like instrumentation uh, that Jason loved to give to me, particularly because I'm a composer and arranger. He's like, all right, you can deal with it. And I had this ensemble that had like a French horn, a viola, a cello, like three flutes, you know, and like it's like this 15 member ensemble and we played like manteca, you know, and we all were just jamming on it. And I can promise you that with the experience of the faculty, that someone that's just even just starting out in their musical journey, like we will figure out a way to teach you a way that you can still make music at the most elementary level. Um, and, and we're even talking like improvising, we're talking about even just like being able to produce something at the concert. And that's the most beautiful thing. When you look at people going from like, you know, Tuesday and then Sunday, you would think that they spent like five months like learning this stuff. And so that's the other amazing thing is that I find that the, particularly the students at this program, somehow they go home, they get the information, they work on it, they come back the next day. And it's, I feel like it's almost been like a month because they've improved so much. And there has never been a time at the program where at the end we were not making music. It was always great music. It's always a fabulous performance. I know Rodney's going to be doing something a little bit different um, with that aspect of it, but it's just going to be a great time in that sense. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And I know for those students who have um, a lot of experience playing, like we even have students who have gone to the conservatory in Puerto Rico who are really mature. They've actually done a lot of playing and we have a uh, great, you know, the, like you noted, the faculty members can work with students anywhere along the spectrum of their experience. You will get challenged 
which is the idea because you want to grow, you want to get better. And, uh, and it is a nice taste of the experience that you would get if you were to come and study at Berkeley. Um, so that's what we're trying to bring to you. Rodney, you know, this is, uh, this is, <laughs> this is so funny. At some point in time, we're going to meet in person. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've been working with Rodney now for a couple of years, but he's only a, a square <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> um, but we're so looking forward to hanging with you in San Juan. And um, could you talk a little bit about, because you're a Berkeley graduate, and you've worked in the industry as a writer, producer, performer, and now you're teaching at Berkeley. And this is precisely the reason why we reached out to you to bring you to San Juan, because we want to bring all of what you have uh, to this program. So why don't you share a little bit about your background and what you're hoping to do? Sure, yeah, first off, thanks thanks everyone for being here. And again, Jason, Ray, thank you for having me. Christina, thank you for all the help. Ian, it's gonna be great to meet you as well uh, at the in Puerto Rico. And I'm looking forward to getting back and getting some Willy Pinchos and some El Hamburger, you know? So yeah, let's go San Juan. Um, but yeah, uh, I've come from, uh, I'm a Latino. So my parents are, uh, my mom's Mexican. And uh, so I've learned Spanish. So I grew up in the Latin music world as well, playing Tejano. That's where I started in Texas. But then I just, uh, then I started doing Latin pop back when that was like the Menudo days. We actually, our band would play with Menudo uh, several, whenever they would tour the United States, as a matter of fact. Uh, so we were on BMG uh, Records, so we signed major record deal, we did all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, so I've been an artist, uh, and at that point I learned that I wanted to do more, I wanted to write and produce music. So that's why I decided to go to Berkeley to learn how to do that, because some of my idols uh, kind of helped Berkeley out and went to Berkeley, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to follow in their footsteps. So I went to Berkeley, graduated from Berkeley. And then uh, I started writing my first job four months out of graduation was a staff writer and staff producer for a really well-known music producer. And my first project was with the Temptations on Motown Universal. So ever since then, I've been writing. I started doing a lot of R&B and gospel music, uh, pop music uh, for, for quite a while. And then I wanted to return to my Latino roots. So I started writing songs in Spanish. So I've worked with Olga Tañon, uh, Melina Leon from Puerto Rico. I've worked with Cumbia Kings. I've worked with uh, Chis Mana, Ali Mojica. Uh, loads and loads of uh, artists from the island as well. And actually one of my favorite studios to work in is in San Juan, it's called Playbook. Um, so uh, now I also, so I did a lot of writing and producing for many Latin artists. Uh, I've done some television work as well, writing, producing, arranging underscore uh, for different types of things. Uh, if y'all know Ellen DeGeneres, uh, she has a TV show. I translated her theme and made a Latin version. So when it airs in Latin America or she wanted to do it on Cinco de Mayo here or Fiestas Patrias or any Latin holiday in the States, they would run the Latin version that I made. Uh, so that was pretty fun. Uh, so yeah, and, so, and then after that, I joined a band called The Script and uh, we had many, many number one hits, uh, loads of records, hit records, toured the world all over the world. Uh, yeah, we never got to Puerto Rico, but did do Rio, did do Mexico City, uh, did some other places. But uh, nonetheless, we had, again, over 20 number one hits around the world and uh, lots of fun playing as an artist once again. And then from that, my last thing on my career bucket list was to be a professor at Berkeley. And so now I'm here and I teach songwriting and production at Berkeley in Boston, as well as the New York campus uh, at the power station. So what we're planning to do with this new track in Puerto Rico is introduce, no matter what level you come in, this is kind of my philosophy even at Berkeley, no matter where you're coming in, whether you're just a beginner or you've been doing this you know, for a long time, we all start somewhere, but we can all reach the goals that we individually are looking for. So we invite everyone to apply and you might feel, well, I don't know, I've never written a song before, but you're really, really interested and willing to work hard, then there may be a place for you in this program and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what songwriting is and then what that process entails and all that goes into it. And then we're going to talk about production. 
production is how we realize that song. It's one thing to write the lyric and the music and then play it on the piano or on the guitar. But if you're trying to, that's one way to get the music out. But then maybe you want to have, you know, maybe you want to do some reggaeton or maybe you want to do some bachata. Maybe you want to do some, you know, baile funk, something, you know, some style. We got to understand what production elements go into making that. Because the, the, the lyric and the, the melody with the harmony, it could be anything. Right, we can play at any tempo, but once we start putting production behind it and arrangement with that, now we start defining a little bit more what genre uh, the song is going to go in. So we're going to cover that. So we're going to start with this big scale explanation of how songwriting works, how production works, and then throughout the week we're going to break it down into smaller pieces. Why is the coro so important, right? Why is the verse? You know, why do we start with the verse? Why do we go in this order? You know, and the new thing out of Puerto Rico, chanteo, you know, right? Why, why do we do that in the second verse, right? So we'll talk about why these sections exist, what their purpose is for, and then we'll talk about production the same way. We'll break it down in smaller chunks so that each day we learn a little bit, we cover a little bit, try to master as much as possible. So by the time we get to the end of the week that, you know, we're able to present these full songs that have been um, arranged and produced to some extent and ready to perform for, for the audience that's going to be present. Excellent. And thank you for that summary. And th this is really uh, an interesting thing because we've seen, you know, as, you know, newer musicians come forward, there's just a higher likelihood that we play multiple instruments. Like I think everybody here on the screen plays multiple instruments everybody's writing, everybody's producing. It's now just part of that musician's toolkit to, to have this in the experience. So we're introducing this songwriting and production track this year in Berkeley and Puerto Rico. And the hope is that uh, this, this first group will be our pilot group and we'll, um, you know, we're gonna have this amazing experience for you. And then we're gonna see how the program continues to evolve um, just as the music continues to grow and, and everybody's experience continues to change. You know, Rodney, I think, um, you know, is it, um, we're looking for like the, the, the students applying to the songwriting and production track, it's really important for them to share some of their original music when they're applying, right? So you can, so you can get a sense of like what their background is. Yeah, absolutely. We want everyone to just send us a private link if you want via YouTube or SoundCloud, I believe it is. And, uh, you know, so we want to hear where you are as a songwriter so that we can make sure that we know where we need what we need to cover. Again, this is a little bit kind of uh, symbiotic or kind of like organic in the sense that it, I could come there with a program and say, do this, but it could be either not enough or maybe way too much. So I kind of want to know this is going to be very tailored for, for everyone who's in the group. To, to figure out, you know, okay, where do we start? What do we need to cover? If some things are already understood, then it helps speed us up into the next topic, or maybe we need to spend more time on this other topic. And that's, it's, so it's really gonna be customized to all of you. So we really invite you to submit what you feel you have uh, as songs. And it doesn't have to be something that they go to the studio to do. They could actually oh, literally not, put no. up their phone and sing and play along with the song. I've had, um, I think some of the applications that we got are already, we had, um, you know, somebody that's not a singer, but they got their sister <laughs> to actually sing the song that they Perfect. wrote. And, and that, and it, and it, as long as it conveys the information about their ability, their harmony, how they pick chords and the, how they pick a groove and come up with a melody, all those core elements are, are what you're trying to get a, a snapshot of so that you can, um, um, yeah, we can tailor the program from that perspective. Again, I'm not a singer, but I am a songwriter, and I did exactly what this uh, this uh, applicant did. Is I get someone to sing my songs a lot of the time. So you know, yeah, yeah. If, if you can do. And even if you do sing it yourself and you don't feel you're a singer, this is songwriting and production, not like super vocalist audition. Right. So, you know, we have all levels of singers in our songwriting class on campus. We even have drummers, believe it or not. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the right. idea is that the idea is that, you know, 
as long as we, you know, we're learning how to formulate melodies and put lyrics to, to music, right? So um, you don't have to be a super singer. We just have to be able to, to just to play an instrument and sing it out. You know, again, I even have some students who don't play instruments or they're barely starting even at Berkeley yeah. because they've been concentrating on vocals the whole time. So even if that's you and you may not feel comfortable playing and singing at the same time, just sing out on a tape, just sing your song a cappella on tape. And then send that in as well. Sing it and record it and send it into us. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. That's great to know. All right. So let's turn it over to you, Christos. You want to just, you know, talk about um, you can share your screen if you'd like, but talk about the the website, the the details online and, and wow. um, the applicate the different tracks and everything. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you in Spanish so that everybody understands because this is very important. Okay. It's muy importante. Eh, así que saludos a todos. Mi nombre es Cristalia Sotomayor. Y les voy a presentar aquí eh, cómo vamos a aplicar al, al programa. Entonces, les voy a dejar el link ahí en el chat. Así que vamos aquí. Es bien sencillo. Cuando vean esta página aquí, eh, aquí también tenemos preguntas que ustedes tengan sobre el programa, como que cuándo y cómo aplico, si soy elegible para el programa. So, aquí te hablamos sobre el programa y también por acá abajo tenemos el feed de los programas, de qué se tratan y todo eso. Así que en esta página es donde usted va a encontrar todo tipo de preguntas que tengan sobre el programa. Para aplicar, le van a dar a este botón de aquí que dice Apply Now y les voy a pedir que por favor llenen todos los encasillados que, los encasillados que estén aquí. Su nombre, eh, su dirección, todo. Eh, llénenlos todos, por favor, porque toda la información que tenemos aquí la necesitamos completa para poder formalizar eh, su aplicación. Entonces, aquí tenemos también información sobre el programa para que ustedes sepan y puedan decidir cuál de los dos programas quieren hacer, que es el Standard Program o el Songwriting and Production Program. Y aquí abajito es donde usted va a seleccionar. Solamente puede escoger un programa, lamentablemente, pero por favor, llénenlo. Muy importante, porque hemos tenido otras personas que no están llenando todos los encasillados y eso es un problema. Y sí, eso es básicamente todo. Aquí ya terminarían. Eh, otra cosa muy importante es que necesitamos que por favor nos envíen tres videos o tres audios. Es muy importante, no solamente uno, porque si nos envían uno voy a tener que escribirla a cada uno porque necesitamos tres. Eh, sus artistas, eh, su eh, nivel de improvisación, de notación melódica, rítmico, teoría. Y ya, eso sería todo. ¿Alguna pregunta? Does somebody have any questions? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things I just want to reinforce is the more detail you can share with us in your application, the better we'll be informed to help your experience. So tell us about, you know, your playing experience, your practicing experience. And you've got those places to type. You can type as much information as you want. You know, tell us what you're interested in learning even. That can be really, really helpful because in the experience that we're designing for you, we want to make sure that you're in, you know, classes that are challenging for you, but comfortable. Yeah. And then putting you in playing experiences in ensembles as well that are really um, comfortable for you. So, you know, especially, um, Yeah, you know, share that information. Let us know what you're interested in, in trying to get into when, you, when you're filling that out. So take a look at the application and then you might go back in a couple of days and then fill it out. And then once you have all your links ready to, to share as well. And in the links that you share, um, it's really important that we get to see and hear your performance, whether you're a vocalist or you're an instrumentalist. Sometimes um, the only videos that you have are when you're with your choir or with your jazz band or your um, orchestra. And you're like the one person in the third row in the middle, and it's really kind of hard to hear you. So if you can, like I play trombone, so I could play an etude, just solo and put my phone up and play an etude. And that would be like a really good thing to share because they could hear my tone, they could hear my intonation, my ability to play melodies and things like that. That's the information that we want. Um, it doesn't need to be you performing with a live show with lots of people. What we're really interested in is getting a, a, a snapshot of like, what are you doing right now? If you're a singer, you might have like a, a little backing track from YouTube that you sing over a track. 
um, your a song that you like. It's kind of like a karaoke, right? A karaoke track, and then you're singing the melody um, of the song. Those are the kinds of things that we need to hear. It doesn't need to be, you don't need to go to the studio. You don't need to hire a camera crew. <laughs> It just needs to be something you do on your phone. Um, and that's perfect because, you know, the phones nowadays can really do a good job of capturing the audio in the video. Um, so we want to turn it over to all of you. Actually, let me do this. Um, let's bring Ruben back on really quick. Um, Ruben, do you want to jump in and just share any thoughts before we, uh, we connect in and, and open it up for questions with everybody? Um, Ruben Amador is a Berkeley alum. He's a, um, oh, he's in his car, man. All right. Well, be careful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. I am. Don't worry about it. I'm just, right now I'm heading to uh, playing in a uh, concert. Okay. So, yeah. Anyhow, uh, yeah, definitely, guys, very important to, to try to convey as much information as you can so uh, we can set you up in a, in a, you know, the group that you, uh, you know, can get the most, most uh, the better experience and, uh, in, the, in the program. The program, you know, is full of, of great resources. I, I, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to say that in Spanish because it's so important. El programa tiene muchos, muchos recursos diversos. Una docena de profesores de Berkeley. Más ahora tenemos el, 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 el songwriting and production track, que es algo que hemos estado trabajando por tantos años para que suceda y por fin pues lo logramos. Eh, eh, va a haber personal de, de maestros de, de Jack trabajando allí. Eh, o sea, hay muchos recursos. La, la gente del Sagrado de Corazón es un gran programa. Queremos que ustedes se beneficien as much as you can from the program. Que se beneficien lo más que pueda del programa. So, para que eso ocurra, tenemos que, que, que place you, ¿verdad? Que, que ponerlos en, en los grupos donde mejor ustedes puedan sacarle provecho. Hay una pregunta muy importante acerca de su nivel de improvisación, su nivel de teoría. You know, don't be humble. If you really know your theory, you know, put a high number. Because sometimes, you know, we get numbers that really don't reflect your level. So try to be really, uh, you know, sincere with, with what you know, okay? Eso es bien importante. Traten de, traten de poner los, los números eh, que usted realmente entiende. Aquí no estamos, we are not looking for professionals, you know? So, uh, you know, uh, even a, a high number doesn't mean that you are, I don't know, Winton or something. So, uh, Remember, esto todavía student level, okay? Student level, try to think about that cuando, oh. cuando, cuando lleguen eso. Um, y nada, aquí estamos. So any, anything that you need, just give me a call and, and most of you know my, my where to find me, Conservatorio del Caribe. And, you, you know, just give me a, a call. That's thing, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, uh, Ruben. And um, and absolutely, you know, the, the uh, CAC is a Berkeley Global Academic Partner. In San Juan, they have Berkeley alums teaching there. Um, they have excellent faculty members. They teach the Berkeley curriculum. So, you know, if you're interested in um, learning more about CAC, you should um, definitely go to their website. Um, Chris Dallas, maybe you can find that and throw that in the in the chat. And um, Ruben is not only a program veteran and a global partner and a Berkeley alum, but he's actually a partner for the program. He's actually a critical partner for the operation and the delivery of the program. So um, he and his team are available if you do have questions. Really quickly, um, before we turn it over for questions and answers for everybody, ladies and gentlemen, could you tell us like in the chat two things? Tell us your instrument. And then tell us, have you applied for the program or not yet this year? So go ahead and throw it in the chat. Like, you know, let us know your instrument and have you applied for the program this year? Cool. Thanks, Brendan. Yep, keep going, folks. We want to see, uh, see those details. And then as we go, um, if you have a question, you can, you can raise your um, Simpsons looking Zoom hand. 
um, and, and come on camera and unmute and all that kind of stuff. We'd be happy to take, oh, Gabriella, yes, we need you. We need bass players. Yes. We need bass players. I so want to say that please, please, please apply because you need to reserve your spot. Yeah. We need you. And please tell yeah. your friends too. If you have a friend who plays music, please tell them, have them come and please, please. Yeah. We need places, as Jason said, we need everybody. So please, please apply. Todo el mundo, por favor, apliquen para que aseguren su eh, espacio. Y la vamos a pasar súper bien. Como estudiante que fui del CAC, eh, perdón, de, también del CAC, sí, pero también de Berkeley en Puerto Rico, fue lo mejor. Me cambió la vida y es donde estudié, es de donde me gradué y donde trabajo ahora. Así que por favor, por favor, aplique. So, Brendan, uh, what's your question, sir? You can, you can come on camera and, yeah, good to see you. Hey. Uh, so my name is Brandon. I'm a guitar player. I actually participated in the uh, 25th anniversary at Berkeley in Puerto Rico, and it was a really nice experience. So I'm excited for this one. Um, so my question, I read that you you guys are um, offering like auditions uh, at the uh, Berkeley in Puerto Rico. Uh, could you guys talk more about that, uh, like details, um, maybe scholarships, stuff like that? Great question. Brennan, thanks for being here. Yeah, and thanks for applying again. This is an amazing opportunity for all any of the participants in the program that are interested to study at Berkeley to be considered for an audition. And so during the program, we're going to do three days of auditions. So when you fill out the application for the program, there's a question on, the, on our Berkeley and Puerto Rico application. And it says, are you interested in attending Berkeley? So we need to know that you wanna come. And if you wanna come, then we're gonna share that information with our admissions team. And they're gonna select people to come and do auditions. During the program, our faculty members, Rodney, Ian, and the rest of the team, will also be nominating people. They'll recommend people that they're hearing in their ensembles and their classes and say, she should get an audition. He should get an audition. You know, And we're gonna give as many opportunities for people to audition as possible. And at the end of the program, at the concert, we will award scholarships for top recipients. And in the past, um, I think we've awarded over a million dollars in scholarship. The level of talent in Puerto Rico is exceptional. Um, the scholarships are for full-time study, at the undergraduate program in Boston, at our campus in Boston. We also award scholarships for our summer programs in Boston that take place usually from June to August. There's Rodney teaches at the songwriting program, the songwriting workshop, there's vocal summit, there's a new gospel summer program this year. There's the five week summer program, there's Victor Wooten's bass lines, there's um, guitar sessions. So there's all kinds of you know, short programs that you can attend and then the five week program. And then we also award scholarships to Berkeley online because a number of our teachers that teach at Berkeley online, I mean, at Berkeley and Puerto Rico are also Berkeley online teachers. And so for those people that aren't able to actually come to Boston, there's a great opportunity for them to take a class through Berkeley Online. So Brendan, yeah, we are gonna be doing that again. There will be a team coming from the admissions office. And um, you know, when you fill out your application, just pay attention to that question. We, we need to know that you have the intention of applying to Berkeley, and then um, we'll go from there and hopefully get you in. And we, we have a limited number of spaces. We can't give everybody an audition, but we try to get in, I think, around 70, between 75 and, and 80 people will we'll, we'll try to audition them. Right, thank you. And also, uh, would the audition be for the fall semester or the spring semester? It depends. Um, if, you, if you have already applied to Berkeley and been accepted, it, 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 there's a potential that it could be for September, 2022, um, but it's probably gonna be for spring and then the following May in the next year. Same thing with the summer program scholarships. It is possible to get a scholarship this year because Berkeley and Puerto Rico happens before the summer programs. And you could get a five week scholarship and then be able to come this summer um, in July of 2022 to the five week program. That has happened. I think, Cristalis, did you do that? Cause you got a five week award when you were a student, right? Yes, I did, but I couldn't make it. I was 13 and I was scared. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was she was didn't make the cutoff. You have to be at least 15 years of age to do the summer programs, but it is possible. Um, but it's you know, it's obviously coming to Berkeley as a full-time student is a is a big plan. You have to put together a really good plan. Um, you know, because you need to apply for financial aid and you have to think about housing and all those other kinds of things. So um the admissions team will speak to you and, and guide you and help you try to make the, the best choice possible. But good question. All right, cool. Thank you. Very excited. Yeah. And who else has questions? Anybody please, else? Please? Uh, we got a question from Hector um, asking about the age limit. The age limit for the program. Yep. S sure. So um, the, the youngest age in the program is technically 15 years old. And it goes up from there. We typically seen like 15 up to sometimes even 30 years old. We have college students come and even some people that are um, still like beginning to work on their graduate programs and things like that. We do also have people that are younger, as Cristalis noted, than the age of 15. And um, what we're looking for for those younger people is we'll sit down with um, I and, 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 and the other faculty members. We want to make sure that you're ready musically. Um, for the experience so that you know uh, that you've had some experience playing and that when you come into the classes that you'll you'll be able to benefit from that experience so we have seen we have had students um, who are under the age of 15 come to the program great question so Hector is 21 so you're eligible to apply for it and then Absolutely. we'll answer your rest of questions he sent me the email so rest of questions to you uh, uh, shortly okay oh great yeah other questions, anybody else that would like to um, ask a question and learn more about the program? You can throw your questions in the chat or you can um, raise your hand and come on mic. Can I ask a question here? How many of you are studying in a music program at school, whether it's at the conservatory? Oh, Akira, cool. Akira, did you have a question? Did you want to ask us a question? Can you explain a little about the audios and videos for the application? Ray, do you want to jump in and talk a little bit about what we're receiving for audios and videos for the application? Sure. So uh, most of our applicants, uh, they're submitting a, uh, uh, up to three links. We love to see up to three links. It could be either a YouTube or a Google Drive, or if we have like a demo or songwriting application, we can just use sound, uh, SoundCloud or something, uh, uh, the links that we can actually click and listen to. Uh, you could also send us, uh, if you have any, if you have no access to uh, you know, YouTube or other uh, the service services, you can just send us your MP4, MP3 files, fine. I will create uh, links for you and uh, you could, uh, we could actually uh, put it into your application. So uh, it could be uh, just the simple links, uh, but we love to have as many as three, because if you send us just one, then it's not enough for us to, to evaluate or review your performance. And also uh, the, on the application, um, the page, there's a little section called um, the explanation of your video. So if you Feel like I want to explain uh, what you do and where you are. Sometimes people, uh, students, send us a, a video that has large ensemble. We have no idea where you are. Sometimes, so you indicate yourself the army pianist, or you are in the middle of somewhere, something like this. So some of um, uh, description of your video will be might be very helpful for us. But yeah, like uh, send us um, at least two. But we love to have at least three uh, video or audio links. Great, thank you, Ray. And there were a couple of questions about where the program is going to take place, and um, we're really excited that um, Universidad del Sagrado Corazón is going to welcome us back. They have an awesome space. Um, lot, it's lots of room to stretch out, and um, I think this year we're excited because we're going to actually get to use some of the um, new rooms in the music department, um, which is going to be great. So. Um, there's plenty of space, um, nice courtyards as well, so that in between classes and during the breaks, students can get together and um, hang out, you know, jam, work on on different uh, music. Um, but yeah, it's it's really really 
really great um, space and the university is so generous in, in supporting this. So at what age um, does a camp begin? So uh, Vic Marie, the, uh, the earliest age is 15. So, yeah. Ah, okay. Akira, you can't open your mic. No worries. Um, is, it, is there a reason why? You can't unmute, huh? All right. Great. Okay, so Gabrielle has two questions. This might be for you, um, Rodney. Um, do the songs for the songwriting track need to be mixed and mastered? Is no, not necessarily. I mean, if you have the skill to do that, go ahead and, and uh, that will also inform the production side as well. So um, they don't have to be, but if you have some experience with that, uh, go ahead and give it a try and send that in. But it could be something as basic as literally putting your phone up and playing the piano and singing. It, you know, yeah. Sure. It could yeah. be your. It could be like your band rehearsing as well, and it could just be like a demo recording. Right. Yeah. But I have a feeling if they're asking about master and mix, they might be already messing around with GarageBand or Logic, and you know, uh, perhaps they're. You know, what I mean, so Gabriella. It, like I was saying, it, it could be as simple as like Jason saying on your phone, so you don't feel the pressure of having to go somewhere and spend some money to do that. But if you're dabbling as well in your computer already, uh, again, uh, that's not necessary. But if you want to give it a shot, that, again, it could help us inform the production side as well. And, and then, you know, go, go ahead. ahead. No. no, go ahead, please. I was going to answer the same question. Yep, uh, the songs can be MP3s. Yes, yes. Yeah, you can MP3 or links of SoundCloud or YouTube. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, cool. Okay, so Akira has a few questions. Let me see if we can get Akira to unmute. Akira, can you turn on your camera? All right, Akira, um, keep trying to, maybe maybe Ray, we can make Akira like a co-host or something just for a second to see if that allows them to open up uh, their camera and their mic. Christian, go ahead. It's good to see you, sir. You wanna ask your question? Yeah, it's fine, you can see me, right? Wait, Not yet, your camera hasn't turned on, but that's okay, we can hear you. All right, perfect. Well, uh... Wait, my question was, hold up, how did I forget? I'm so sorry. Wait. <laughs> That's all right, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you guys mentioned about like the composing, you know, that uh, you asked for, like, uh, for a video, you know, to test like your comp composing skills or, yeah. But the point is that does the song have to um, have lyrics or it can just be like an instrumental piece? This is a great question. Rodney, what are you thinking? <laughs> yes, uh, even though I believe that uh, songs could be melodies without words, uh, we're focusing this track to be, for the songwriting production side, that is focused on uh, lyrics, adding lyrics. So if you are an instrumentalist and make melodies, we still want to welcome you, but also understand that you'll probably be collaborating and words will be attached to your melody so uh that's a, that's kind of going to be the process on that one yeah i think um one of the things this has come up before with other students and i and this is something that maybe we can hang with you and talk about because we do have the special lecture time in the afternoons and we have a number of participants who are writers they're composers and maybe we can um look at using the special lecture time to focus on uh, a writing and arranging techniques, especially with you being there and there being some other faculty members who are really adept uh, as writers. Um, this could be something interesting to explore. It's, it's something that is a reoccurring theme with this group of people applying this year. So, um, cool. Gabriella Flynn, go ahead, please. Hi, sorry, it's me again. That's <laughs> yeah, fine, go um, for it. <laughs> Okay, so I have a question. So most most of my songs are in Spanish. They're written in Spanish. Uh, I didn't notice if at the moment of submitting my songs, do I have to translate them or in the program? Like whenever we start the program, do I have to translate uh, them? 
No, Spanish is perfectly fine. See, thank you. Oh. Great okay, question, though. That is a really, really good question. For all the songwriters out there, if you sing in Spanish, you write in Spanish, perfect. Right. Time. Yeah. Yeah, totally cool. Um, Akira, if you want, you could try to, you know, type your questions in the chat. If not, what we can do is we can follow up with you after the session and get your questions answered. Um, let's see. Any other question? I'm just scanning the chat to see if there's other questions here. Ro Roberto, you play play bass, quattro, and guitar. Should I? Uh, should the which should the video be? Ah, Roberto, that's a great question. Um, we really, and I know Ray answered it in the chat, but we need to know what the instrument is that you're going to focus on in the program, and that'll be the instrument that you want to feature on your videos. So if you want to come as a guitarist do guitar. If you want to come playing cuatro, play cuatro. If you want to come as a bassist, play bass in the videos or in the audio recording. If you do one of each, we're going to be confused. Um, so help us out, like focus. Um, it's going to be really important. You know, let us know what you want to do. And my recommendation would be to look at the list of faculty members on the website. And our bass teacher is going to be Fernando Huergo. Our guitar teacher is going to be David Gilmore. Go to their websites, check them out. That might help you decide if you want to do guitar or bass. Um, and you know, it, it's something uh, uh, you might want to spend more time with one teacher than the other. So, cool. Um, any other questions? Please feel free. You can try. Oh, there we go. There's the list. Almost. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks to Rodney and Ian and Crystallis. And uh, my links are recital videos. That's a great, Anna, thank you for adding that to the chat. So ladies and gentlemen, Anna noted that she's got recital videos that are really long. They might be like 30 minutes long or longer, it could be a full concert of something. And she's in the notes about the recording, she said, go to like this particular time. That's where I'm being featured. Thank you, do that. You can do that with the videos, especially if it's a YouTube video or a Vimeo or something like that. Putting in the specific timestamp where you start to be featured is really, really helpful. Um, thank you, great, Anna, that's perfect. Yeah, and uh, there's a section on application. You can actually type in, you know, the information about your video and where you are. You know. Cool. And um, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to put my email address in here. And you can always reach out to me um, with any questions that you have about the program. Crystallis has got her email in there as well. And um, we're available to you in the Global Initiatives team. Our, our email address is on our website um, uh, for the program as well. And the, there's team members there every day of the week that can answer uh, questions for you. So we really hope to see you at the program this year. I know um, it is Saturday afternoon. You might have friends. Uh, maybe if you're a teacher, you might have students that couldn't make the session today. Please share information with them, tell them to go to the website, and obviously um, tell them to reach out to us with any questions that they have. And we're really excited. Um, we're, we're super happy to be coming down uh, to San Juan and play some music with all of you. Will the program be online? Ariana, thank you. That's a great question. We're going to be there in person. It's not going to be online. We are going to be in the room playing music and learning music together. So great question. Um, but yeah, we're going to be at the uh, Universidad del Sagrado, Sagrado Corazon. Yep, for the whole week. And it's going to be awesome. We're going to do a big concert at the end. And uh, all your friends and family can come out and hang out and hear you perform. Awesome. Everybody, apply thank now. you. Very yeah, apply now. Yeah, apply, yeah, please don't wait. Um, spaces are going to fill up. Um, yeah, and, and we know we know it's going to get really, really busy. Um, so go to the website today and, and get your application um, 
uh, going. So songwriters perform their songs at the end. Yeah, we're going to have a songwriter showcase um, at the program because of, of that special track. So Gabriela, good question. Yep. Cool. Wonderful. Ian Rodney, Chris Dallas Ray, have a great afternoon. Everybody be well. Um, Thank you. Ruben, I hope you're safe wherever you're driving. Okay. Yeah, he already went to the concert, so he's yeah. still here. Cool. All right, everybody, be well. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.